my school met runs a ghost. After some months in her new school bank holy I, Susan began to experience some weird things she couldn't explain to her newfound friends because they all felt unreal. I was still matron, Madame Joyce, was appearing in her dreams every night. Each morning when she woke up, she couldn't recall the contents of the dreams, only remembering seeing her staring at her. Madame Joyce was a loving person, if you ask the students. She never punished them and was always eager to help when it was brought to her notice. But Susan soon found out some strange things about Madame Joyce. She never left the school premises, but always had provisions and snacks to sell to the students. She never bought foodstuff, but her apartment always smelled of food being cooked. One Friday evening, as all the girls were playing outside due to it being the weekend, and fortunately for Susan, a bunk mate in Naomi, who had taken it upon herself to bully Susan, had traveled due to sickness. Susan decided to stay in her room and read some novels she borrowed from the school library, as their return date was due for Monday. After some time, she fell asleep. Susan opened her eyes and found herself in the middle of the school premises. She saw Mr. John, their wicked math teacher. As she tried to call out to him, a hand closed her mouth and pulled her behind a building. As she turned to protest, she saw Madame Joyce, but not the Madame Joyce she knew, but a young Madame Joyce, who seemed to be her age mate. It suddenly dawned on her that Mr. John looked younger too. It wasn't the fat Mr. John she knew. Shh, Madame Joyce said as the boat watched Mr. John call a young Madame Joyce over to his staff room. Susan suddenly understood what was happening. She was being shown the past of Mr. John and Madame Joyce. Joyce, have you considered my proposal? Mr. John, who seemed to have been young Joyce's teacher, asked. Sir, I can never be your girlfriend. My mommy said I am too young for such. She replied with fears in her eyes. Come on, are you not 11 years old? You're a big girl, Mr. John retorted as he tried to hold her hand. Young Joyce pulled back and ran back to her class. The scene changed and Susan saw young Joyce knocking on Mr. John's staff quarter's door. As he opened, Sir, this is the assignment you said I should bring. She replied, looking like she wanted to leave as soon as possible. Susan turned to talk to the Joyce that was watching with her. Why are you the only one submitting the assignment? He refused to collect my assignment unless I brought it to his quarters. Young Joyce said, as young Joyce turned to leave, Wait, Joyce, Mr. John called. Come in, let me mark your assignment so that you can take the notes with you to read for your exams. I will read with my friend, sir, Joyce replied. But Mr. John continued until she gave in. As they both entered the room, everywhere went silent. After a couple of minutes, Mr. John was seen peeping outside, making sure no one was there as he dragged a big bag into the empty school dorm site. He dug a hole and threw the bag into the hole, covering it, and left. Everything ended there. Madame Joyce turned to Susan. How do I help? Susan asked. You can't. It's already dead. She went further to explain that Mr. John Susan knew today was the son of the Mr. John in the hotel. She has not been able to rest as no one ever found out what happened to her. Immediately, Susan woke up from the trance and she realized that she was drenched in sweat. She heard shouting outside the hostel and rushed to see what was happening. The security men had found a skeleton that seemed to belong to a young girl. The next couple of weeks were hectic as more officials came and eventually it was discovered the skeleton belonged to a Joyce that went missing in the school years ago. The skeleton was returned to the family of the girl. It was concluded as mother, but the murderer was not discovered. Susan Womb Young Joyce had warned not to disclose anything as it would only hurt the innocent family of Mr. John. Could not say anything as no one would believe her either. She later had Madame Joyce resigned and left the night of the event, but Susan knew better. She had finally found rest. 
Which story do you think we will discuss in the next episode of Bank School?